Hi everybody, I'm Dan Chan and I'm a multidisciplinary artist based in Liverpool. I work with textiles, digital work and performance. I use my work as a way to explore my own identity by unpicking the stereotypes that exist in society around my race, my queerness and the gender binary. My current work is an exploration of the layers that make up the human experience and my own identity in relation to that. And I do this by using an alien fairy hybrid persona to explore these things. I do this by bringing all elements of my practice together by using things like textiles, makeup, costume and drawing, whether that's by hand or on Photoshop, to create dynamic imagery to express my identity and the issues that I feel like that need to be spoken about in the world. Although my work brings everything together as one, I do create pieces of work that just work within just one of these specialisms. For example, I was involved in Red Flags, which was a group installation of textiles work made by artists around the UK and Europe for Margate Pride last year. I worked with the Festival of Hope at the Atkinson Museum in Southport to create a series of textiles work for a community arts project based around ideas of heritage and hope for the area. I also created a digital piece for LGBT plus History Month at the Museum of Liverpool earlier this year. And recently, I've been involved in projects like workshops and writing opportunities. As you can see in my work, figures are a prominent feature, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to express yourself and celebrate yourself by creating a character or a persona through illustration and performance. And I'm going to show you different ways in how you can do this. So as you can see here, I have already made a character. So I started with a base, just a random shape that I painted. And then I painted out different facial features and stuck them on and played around with the uh, different facial expressions that you can make. And once I was happy with the composition, I glued everything down. And then I started to draw in details like the hair and the legs and like the details on the bag. And now I'm going to show you how you can make another character to accompany this one or it can be completely separate. So here I've got some cut out shapes. You can literally use any shape, but I chose to do different shapes of oval just so we can play around with like the facial feature. So I know I want it to sit like this, so I'm just gonna, really gonna stick them down. And then once that's down, that's my base for like the body and the head and the like essentially the character itself. And now I'm going to play around with like the facial expressions or composition of them. So if you just play around with the composition. So here, when the eyes like this, it looks kind of content. But if you do change them like this, it looks a bit more kind of angry. And then you can just have a play with around, like with how close you want the eyes to be, the nose to be to the eyes, the mouth, until you're happy with how it looks. And then once you're happy with it, you can glue it down. And don't worry if it doesn't have the details in that you want, because we can draw in them afterwards. And the main thing here is just to have a little play around with the things that can that you do like with the composition of the shapes and the feature, facial features, but also just to have some fun really and create a character that you want to bring to life, whether it's a part of yourself or something completely imaginary, it's up to you. So now that's done, I'm gonna stick this down. Just some, exactly as you can see, this is just some scrap paper that I've practiced on. So literally use any paper, card, fabric that you have lying around the house. So as you can see, it's looking quite round and quite plain. So what I'm going to do here is draw in some facial expressions. Well, eyebrows, because they really do add character to the face and dimension. And just add in details where you think will add the characteristics that you want to be portrayed. I'm going to add some shadow here, just a bit, add a bit of depth. Obviously I'm doing this quite quickly just to show you, but you can take as long as you need and not as long as you want for when you actually create your own character. So do that on the other side. And don't worry if you're not comfortable with drawing. You can also use things like magazine cutouts 
that already have people in them and just take the fe facial features that you're drawn to. Same with like the heads, the bodies and things like that. You can do the exact same. So I'm just gonna take some pencils and add an extra details. You can see I'm just playing around with what could happen. So I'm gonna give them a hat. A weird kind of hat. Literally, it can be anything you want it to be. And I'm literally just making this up as I go and drawing quite intuitively. And we're gonna add some fringe, just for a bit of fun, and some beads. If you have any actual beads, you can glue them down or cut some out of a fabric or a coloured piece of paper, or just draw them on like I have. And again, we're just going to draw in more details. Because the more detail you add, the more it comes to life. And also play around with like colour, pattern and texture. So you can see obviously these are quite bold colours, but I'm going to leave this quite plain just so this can stand out and then that can also stand out as its own feature. And here I'm just adding in details. There we go. I'm gonna do a little, a little bow on top. You can add as much as you like or as little as you like. It just totally depends on the character that you're making. So now we need some legs and arms. So I've already drawn some out here. And you can literally, again, do anything you want. Make them as long as you want, or as short as you want. Any shape, direction, so they can be squiggly, or just straight lines. So I want them to be quite short. We'll do three legs. So we've got three legs. Um, it does help to include some of the same colours in different areas, just to help bring things together. So obviously the green matches the greens here. And these browns and like, almost deep reds or the same sort of family to that sort of purple burgundy colour and the nose so it just helps bring everything together and tie the character together as one. So now we're going to glue these legs down and you can be as fussy as you like or as messy as you like so you can also overlap things or leave them to be almost like touching on the line. It just depends on the look that you want and the vibe that you want to give from your own character and from yourself really and almost you're creating a visual story with just one image or multiple images and we can also play with how the two different characters interact so now we're going to draw some shoes or feet we'll draw some heels and draw some really big dramatic shoes so i feel that the more you exaggerate features, clothes, or shoes, or anything really, it really does add to the way a character can come to life. Um, if you were to imagine it as almost like as an animation, or if it was brought to life through you, or as a real character, how would they move, and how would they walk, and how would they act? And does that influence different ways that you can combine certain colours, images, and text? And imagery really. Again we're just adding in more details and leaving them to be just line work like the hat just so everything stands out and then we can add in some colour once we've drawn out the main shapes. So we're just going to extend this almost floor that I've already drawn in here to kind of frame the image and just you can add some pattern in the background to further add to the narrative of the image. And really, you can also add in some details in the background just to bring everything to life a bit more. It's almost like a skyline, this one. So as it's coming to life, I'm almost creating a narrative in my head that is helping me inform the next moves that I'm doing on the page. So it's almost like there are two alien characters, alien creatures that have landed in a cityscape that's in the background and they're just going about day-to-day -day life and experiencing what it is to be a human. As you can see, this lovely alien is carrying a purse and we can add some accessories to this one too. So the background can be quite abstract or 
textured as you want it to be. It just is to give the effect, not necessarily to add in the details like we have on these features here. So we're gonna give us some yellow shoes. And some inspiration you could look at is look at poses and magazines to help you inform the poses that you're gonna create on the page. And you almost use them as a kind of starting point if you want, if you're struggling to find ways to bring it to life. Or even create poses yourself and take photographs of yourself or you can do that in the mirror. And sometimes I do do that with my own work. If I feel like I need to have some sort of reference photo that I can't imagine in my head or find somewhere, I'll just move around and see how the body interacts and what sort of vibe it gives out. And if it is the one that I'm intending to give up through my work, then I will use it as a starting point. And now we need some arms so so really just be a bit playful with the marks that you make and the shapes that you create so we're going to give them three fingers because it is an alien and just have some fun that's the main thing here and we, we can give her some nails just since they're in the city they've just gone to the nail salon and we'll just add, it's nice to bring in some of these colors that we have elsewhere just to help tie things in again together and obviously that almost is similar to that purple. So if you think of it as like our own bodies, the way tonal and color works with the body, um, they differentiate, but also are in the same family. And again, we just add some more details. And just further enhance what we've already created on the page. And as you can see, I'm not really worried about staying between the lines because I feel like if you go out of the lines that you create, it adds a bit more personality to it. And I always feel it's better to make the wrong mark in the right place than the right mark in the wrong place because it will really just add to the the image you're creating. Okay, so this is a bit bizarre, but it's what happened. It, we made it intuitively and it's what happened as we created the piece of work. And as you can see, it's not realistic at all. So you can almost go as wild as you want or as realistic as you want. It's really up to you on what you prefer. And it's almost like a scene from a, like an animation or a comic. So if that helps you create some sort of story or build a character up, then use that as a way to create a persona. Um, it's really whatever works for you because we all work differently. And over time we work out ways that work for us and don't work for us. And the only way to figure that out is through experimentation, really. That's what I find for myself anyway. Gonna add a few more details and once i've made this i'm going to show you how ideas from this can translate into a performance sort of piece and how you can almost draw an image out on paper or collage an image out on paper and use that as a piece of inspiration to create an image on your face or just through your own body language itself just adding in extra details and here i'm literally just adding some pattern and mark making because it's a little bit more fun than just a plain grey, plain pink, whatever colour you were to use. It just adds depth and dimension, I feel. And I'm always drawn to things that almost clash because that's just what I like. <laughs> and I find it more interesting, to be honest. So now we've given the body some context. You can almost see that it has come to life a little bit just through adding scene three and adding details in on each character. So these are two aliens that have landed from space. They've landed in one city in the, somewhere on the planet and they're just exploring how it is to live as a person for a day. See, this one is just wiggling around and doing its thing. They bought a hat from one of the shops. Obviously they're enjoying themselves. And here this, this figure She's been shopping for a bit, she bought herself a purse. And I guess she's either waving at a friend or she might be hailing a taxi. We'll never know. And that's up to you, really. The, the narratives that you create is really down to you and the images that you make and just to really play around and have some fun. So for the performance side of things, you can bring anything together. So if that's fabric, 
um, clothes, objects, anything really. Um, and just like piece them together in ways that you find interesting and that really work for you. So you can see I've got a shirt, a kimono slash jacket, this fabric wool hanging that I dyed, and another blanket here. And I've just laid them, tied them together to see how it works. And if I like the way it drapes and like falls on the body, then that's how I work with it. And it really is just playing around with it and seeing what happens. And obviously the makeup, jewelry, the hair really does add to it. But if you don't have those things, that's completely fine. Because what the main thing is just to experiment with the way you can combine things. So if it's like colour and pattern. So obviously here there's like a really fine pattern, almost like similar to a denim. And then there's like a plain grey with a large scale kind of tie dye with another plain grey. And those different shades, different patterns and different scales of pattern really help to kind of create a cohesive look, but also have each element stand out on their own. And what I really want to add to the look is a hat and I don't have a hat. So I've got a yoga mat and I really want it to be really big. So here we go. So as you can see, I can just hold it in place and literally just have some fun and objects and clothes will make you like move in a certain way whether it's restricting your body or making you feel a certain way internally so obviously this is it's very tall so you just kind of play around with how the objects move like like this So as you can see, the physical characterization of the persona is very similar to the collage drawings. So you can see the really big giant eyes, that's exaggerated. Same with the mouth. The weird sort of jewelry and clothes. And then the kind of cartoonish hair that's almost like kind of surreal. Um, and the main thing is to just play around and have some fun and allow your like vivid imaginations to come to life through experimentation. Because if you keep working in ways that are very familiar to you, you won't be able to develop your skills as well and as, as easily because if you work in unfamiliar territories, then great things can really happen. And that's how I came about with this sort of physical persona. So have some fun and start playing around. <laughs>